Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitali, and today we're gonna make, on this episode of Lauren Kitchen, we're gonna make a fantastic French chicken stew, Coco Van. We're gonna make it because it's A, absolutely delicious, but it also feels really special. So I think it's the kind of thing that would be so wonderful to serve at this time of year. I know we all think about the big holiday, the big day, but we tend to forget how much entertaining can happen from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. So I'm gonna provide you some recipes. This is one of them that you can serve. Coco Van, crusty bread, mixed green salad, lovely glass of wine, and a tarte tan at the end. I mean, what a phenomenal dinner is that, right? So let me run you through what I'm doing. In my Dutch oven here, in my shallow Dutch oven, I just turned it on and I've got some bacon. This is thicker cut bacon and it's not super thick, but it's thicker cut. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and crisp it up. I put it in a cold pan and then kind of bring it all to temperature together because it allows the bacon to render more fat that way. So I'm just gonna cook this until it gets nice and crispy and it renders all the fat that it needs to render. I also have my oven preheated to 350. And I'm gonna show you what I'll be working on next. So let's talk Coco Van for a second. It's a classic French stew, chicken stew. I'm not saying this is authentic by any means, but I'm telling you it is divine. Bone in, skin on chicken. Typically you would use a whole chicken cut up into pieces. I like to use all bone in, skin on chicken thighs because A, it's my favorite cut. B, they're cheap and cheerful. And C, they cook perfectly every single time. So I'm using bone in, skin on chicken thighs. You also need, and this is optional, but I do recommend it, a little bit of brandy or cognac. Um, it does give you some depth to the stew that's delicious. You'll need some red wine. Um, you always wanna use like a burgundy, something that you would drink, never like a cooking wine that you would buy at the grocery store because it has to be a good quality. You need a little bit of tomato paste. I like to add a little bit of rosemary. You, you can also use a bay leaf if you don't love rosemary. Garlic, onion, You'll need a little bit of chicken stock, you'll need some carrots, you'll need garlic, you'll need cipollini onions at the end, or pearl onions. Um, but we'll talk about all of that when the time comes. While that's crisping up, I already told you my oven's preheated to 350. If I haven't, my oven's preheated to 350. I'm going to sear, sear, season my chicken thighs well on both sides with plenty of salt and pepper. Bacon is looking great. Rendered a good amount of fat, just using a slotted spoon to remove it to a bowl. I rendered a lot of the bacon fat. I just left a tiny bit behind. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, and now we're gonna add in the chicken thighs. Now you may wanna do this in batches because there's nothing worse than a steamed chicken thigh. You want to develop really beautiful color, and you don't wanna crank the heat as high as it goes. You wanna keep it at about medium high, and just give the, the thighs enough space to brown. So I'm just gonna do three at a time, and now I'm gonna season this side while I have them flipped. Beautiful and just let them cook until they become really lovely, beautifully golden brown, and I'll remove them, I'll do my second batch, and then I'll show you what everything looks like when it's there. Okay, chicken's all seared, and then I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous, you love it. I took out some of the fat, and I added a little bit of olive oil to saute my onions in. I'm like, where are my onions? My onions and carrots. I don't like all of the chicken fat, because it's also still gonna render out some as it cooks. So that's why I take a lot of it out. But you could all leave it in and just saute your onions in that if you wanted to. I also somehow lost all these brown bits. They will lift when we start adding our liquid, um, but it is vital flavor. So I don't like to get rid of it. Where's my one spoon? I put it on the other side of the kitchen. <laughs> don't ask me why. I'm gonna go ahead and season this with a pinch of salt. And I'm gonna just let these cook until they soften, begin to just sort of like hold some color, and then we move on to the next step. Adding some chopped garlic. All these bits are going to lift as soon as we add some liquid, so don't fear. And just know that all of that brown stuff stuck to the bottom of the skillet, that's called free flavor. It's rich. It's got such complexity and it's just so delicious. Why would you waste that? You know what I mean? Stir the garlic in for like 30 seconds just to kind of get rid of that gar like raw garlic bite. So now let's talk brandy 
or cognac, whichever you decide to use, um, you can omit it if you wanted to. You can't omit the wine, sadly, because what makes the stew so delicious is the fact that it's cooked in wine and lots of it. Um, you can't omit the cognac. I think it's a really pivotal, like vital part of the stew, so I don't omit it. Now, I know some recipes will tell you to take a match to it and light it on fire to cook out the alcohol. You don't have to do that. By letting it cook for just a minute or two, it does the same thing. You see, it's already starting to lift all those little brown bits. I'm just gonna cook this for a minute. It's starting to evaporate already. Add about a tablespoon or two of some tomato paste. Stir that in. And now at this point, you're gonna add the stock, chicken stock. You're gonna go ahead and add your vino. Add that right in. This is so good. It feels really luxe. It feels really special and it is special. So if you're gonna serve this to friends, I'm telling you, delightful. Put your bacon right back in. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and add a sprig of rosemary. You don't have to if you don't want to. I do because I like it. And I'm going to take my chicken and add it all back in. Now, I will say, you can, if you want to, remove the skin because it's not going to remain crispy. Um, it will go a bit soggy, but it also gets tender and delicious. And I'm someone that's just not afraid of fat. I'm not afraid of a delicious piece of crispy yet soggy <laughs> chicken fat. I just think it's it adds so much flavor, so I add it in. Um, you can also just use boneless, skinless chicken thighs if you wanted to, but again, not quite the same. I'm gonna add a lid to the, the pan. Get the juices in there. What was I thinking? Adding the lid on, popping it into my oven at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes. I will show you what it looks like when it's there, and then we will do a few final things to this before it's done. My chicken was in the oven for 45 minutes. I took it out, took the lid off, and it's now on my burner. It's cooking on medium heat, bubbling away. I have a skillet here with some butter melted to it. We're gonna add some cremini mushrooms. Some I've halved, the smaller one I've just left it in half, and then the bigger ones I've cut into quarters. Those are gonna saute until they're a beautiful golden brown color. I am gonna season them now. Everyone that tells you no season mushrooms right away, it doesn't matter because they're gonna draw out moisture regardless, and then what happens is that moisture will cook out, and then the mushrooms will develop a beautiful golden brown color. Now we're going to do, we're gonna create a thickener for the stew. Um, it's like a French method. I don't even know how to say it, so I'm not, gonna I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but basically you take softened butter to it. You're gonna add some all-purpose flour, and you're just gonna mix that together until the butter is basically well incorporated with the flour, and it just makes a paste. So just give yourself a second to do that like that, it doesn't take very long at all. And what this does is it prevents any clumps from forming, um, and then you have just a really gorgeous, glorious, thickened stew that is phenomenal. I'm gonna take out the rosemary. If you don't like rosemary, I wouldn't suggest leaving it in or even adding it because it does, it does provide quite strong flavor. You could use thyme or a bay leaf or some fresh thyme and a bay leaf in its place. When that's bubbling, you're gonna add your thickener and it will melt and it be absolutely delightful, so do not panic. Add that right in, along with some frozen pearl onions. You can use Ciccolini onions or fresh pearl onions. Obviously, you're gonna wanna peel them. I can never find fresh pearl onions in my grocery store. I mean, I've said this about 40,000 times on my grocery store, it's kind of lacking. <laughs> Um, you see the thickener is already just about fully melted. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this bubble away for the same amount of time it takes for my mushrooms to brown. And in the meantime, I mean, I really don't have much to do. The only thing I'm gonna do is chop up some fresh parsley. I'm gonna serve mine with a lovely, gorgeous loaf of crusty bread that my girlfriend made for us this weekend. And I, put, I popped it into the freezer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reheat it. Um, you could do egg noodles alongside, mashed potato, whatever your heart desires. It's fantastic. So let that bubble away and thicken for like 10 minutes while the mushrooms cook, and then we end, finish it off. Mushrooms look fantastic. 
add them right in. You really only want to add them in at the last minute or so. I add them in the last, like I would say, four to five minutes, if that. It has thickened. It is just absolutely glorious. The mushrooms will drink up that delicious sauce, gravy, whatever you want to call it. It's making my mouth like literally water. And then I'm gonna add some parsley now because I feel like it really does need it. And then I will serve some fresh in a bit when I go to serve it. Let this just hang out for several minutes and then we serve. That is perfect. I'm gonna turn this off and just look at the lusciousness of this, okay? The chicken you know is perfectly cooked. It's really hard to do chicken thighs wrong, but look at this. I mean, it is just the onions, the bacon, the carrots, just the, the everything, everything. This is like, my mouth is watering. You definitely need starch to soak up this fabulous liquid. So good. A little parsley and a big appetite. Here, let's cut into this, get it real close. I mean, it just falls right apart. I'm trying not to splash myself with anything. Look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a neat eater, so for me to be this poised means I care about you a lot. Mmm. Mmm. It is so, the bacon, you know, I'm someone, I don't always think bacon makes everything better. I know. But here, the salty smokiness plays really, really well with the richness of the wine. The cognac definitely plays a part here. I love the rosemary, but like I said, it can be overpowering. So if you don't love rosemary, leave it out. The carrots are sweet, they're tender, but they're not falling apart. They still have a little bit of a bite to them. So you can see I can sort of cut into them and they'll still hold their shape, which I love. Chicken's tender, it's succulent. It's the perfect comfort food, yet special enough to entertain with this time of the year. It is absolutely dynamite. Go to lauraintheekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you've enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one.